I'm going to I'm going to run the little tiny sample while I talk. Can every can anybody hear me? <laughs> okay, this is the littlest sample they they send a, you know, a few files and it it'll happen real quick. Okay. Well, hello. I'm Jill Taylor and I'm actually new to this. Many of you probably might know more about 3D printing than I do. So if you do, help me. <laughs> um, let's see. I've been a potter for over 30 years and uh, mostly hand building, very little wheel stuff, but I use the wheel. And I have a whole studio and my over here, um, a couple of blocks away over on Yakina. And uh, let's see, when I, uh, when I found out, I guess it was in July, I found uh, my son-in-law said, oh, 3D printing and now you can get them, you know. And so I found the regular 3D printer and went hog wild and inundated myself with everything I could learn. And uh, this is just a sampling of some of the things. First of all, I started out, my husband and I made these ornaments, and I, I really loved them, but they weren't exact enough for me. So the 3D printing allowed for mathematical precision. So this is the difference between the two. Maybe you can't see it, but I can. And uh, then I thought, oh, I'd make some molds with with the 3D printing. And so we made this, and this is the result. This one's porcelain. Oh, okay. Okay, let me go back. Where was I? <laughs> I have not done a lot of public speaking. Okay, so here's the, here's the star. Hmm? Oh, right. Yeah, you don't need to see me. <laughs> um, and, and so this is, this is the two part. Wait a minute, where, is, where do I no. stand? Where do don't I stand? Oh, okay, okay. And so then eventually I, I scaled it down to a little jewelry size, which I hope to do maybe with silver clay, if you guys know about silver clay. Whoops. And uh, like I said, this is, this is this, the next second star I did. Five points is 10 times harder than eight points. And then I saw a picture of somebody's 3D design of a koi, which everybody loves koi, and I do too. So I sculpted one myself, and so I'm crazy about fish. So eventually I printed out this guy, made it into a sprig, for those of you who know what sprigs are. Oh, backing up. These are prototypes I was hoping to make molds of, to slip cast some of my work. <clears throat> because what I like to do is I like to surface the first First thing I did when I did a combination of technology and pottery was uh, laser, laser printing um, decals. If you know about it, <coughs> some, of the, um, some of the ink in, in uh, printers, laser printers, has iron in it and it makes beautiful designs. This design I got from the British Museum. They have millions of designs and pictures that are royalty free because they're over a hundred years old. <laughs> then I did a couple of um, drape molds. Fantastic to use drape molds this way. So then about two months ago I heard that this thing was on sale for eight hundred dollars. Really? It's nine now because oh. <laughs> it's going up. But you can buy this kit 
to convert a regular printer into a, a ceramic printer. It, it would require a learning curve, I'm sure, but um, <laughs> it can be done. And that's three or four. I, I can't remember if it's, I, I think it's 300. And uh, so these are, these are examples of what I've printed in the last few days. And uh, I got, these just came out of the kiln. I'm just so happy with them. They're uh, prettier than I expected. Because when I saw 3D printed pottery on, in pictures, it had almost zero appeal to me. But when you actually see it like that, it's, oh, that's cute. <laughs> OK, so um, and it has a nice feel to it. Uh, and especially if you have great glazes. What kind of clay are you using? Well, this I just went to, I go to Tacoma Clay Art, and uh, I just asked them, what's the most plastic clay? Because we want plasticity to come out of there. Normally, I use Grawlig porcelain. That's my clay. And uh, they make it there, too. And it's very flex, uh, for, for porcelain, it's very plastic. Grawlig porcelain, Rolling. Rolling. and, and I, I do mid-range, 5.6. And uh, <coughs> so uh, that's, that's what I do. Some of these are porcelain. Some of them are OH6. I don't know who else shops those it. Are six. Hmm? Those are cone 6? Those are cone 6? Y yes, these were all cone 6, yes. And uh, let's see, what else do I want to tell you? Okay, one of the downsides of this is the bottoms. Now, I'm trying to work with the, the, the software part to tell them, make a base on these things. But uh, the people that develop this, I don't think are real part potters. Uh, they're, they're just, the people that contracted them to do it uh, are, are potters, but, okay, so that's the little guy. He's so cute. But do you see the bottom? It did not fill in very well. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. And if you're working with porcelain, you also have that compression issue, right? With the or with this, because I heard that porcelain doesn't work very well with printers. It yeah, yeah. I I was thinking, what I would do is I'd fill up one of those little square bottles with slip, and I'd really fortify it. Hold it up. Can you see it? I don't know if you can see the holes. Now, when I, I'm working on the, the um, programming part now, and this came as an interruption. Can you adjust the layers? Yeah, when I figure that part out, because I'm having to learn everything at once. Okay, and I, I don't know Fusion 360. And uh, you just use more layers, I think, the that's all it takes. Yeah. Well, yeah. So I'm just going to squish this guy because I need this platform here, and I'm going to put it back on. So we're coming to the open studios, and and uh, I want to thank. Um, Nathan Abel for helping me with some of the programming, but I still haven't got that far. I'll print up, let's see. Oops. Do I have glasses? <laughs> Thank you.
Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, it is. Yes, everybody who's designing them are trying to put twists and textures and turns and. So what is the maximum size? Okay, this one. Uh, um, I think it's 240 millimeters. That's about 10 inches, I guess. It helps to mist it a little bit. The butt, the bat. This is laying down a skirt, if you know what that is. It's sort of priming the, the, the um, oops, I keep forgetting I'm in the way. So this machine, oops. It, 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 uh, I'm gonna start it over. Stop. There it stopped. Try again. I don't know what I did with it, but I rolled out some little tiny cookies to um, put on, the, to print right on it and start, you know, instead of having to go back. I've seen other people do this. They, they pat, a little, pat a little clay there. Does clay get more viscous if it's warm? Oh, that's right. You have to set all the settings to no heat. It won't print because it's it's not built like ordinary 3D printers where it heats the filament. My hands are not dry, it would help to pat it into place. So this was a design that came off of the internet. There's several sites that give either free or very cheap designs. Whoops, I keep forgetting that. Yes. Yes, well, uh, I've done most of my model on Tinkercad, which is by AutoCAD or Autodesk. And uh, it's very simple. It, you know, they even use it to teach children, but it's very powerful too. And um, since my, my interests are not in these frilly things, my interest was, like I said, prototypes for things I'm already doing. And uh, <clears throat> so th my designs are really pretty simple, though I have complicated it. <laughs>
I'm sure. How do you generate them? How do you generate them? I said I, I use Tinkercad. Oh, and okay. so, uh, like this one, let's see if I can go remember. Oh, yes, I just did a, a, a pyramid. And then uh, trying to slice this faceting off really hard. And, uh, and then trying to get going squared around, that's my obsession. And I cannot do it yet. Uh, and then they got a scanner here now, and we scanned a piece I did many years ago, and I printed up, I forgot to bring him. It's a little figurative thing from ancient history, and uh, we were able to print him up. I mean, her. The 3D scanner. The 3D scanner, we scanned it, put it in the computer. So that's another thing is to get the design from something that already exists. Yeah, feel free to come over and look at the printing. So is there, um, like, with the, are there different nozzle lifts and things like that that you're setting so you, you know, with your nozzle? Oh, I'm are you doing different <laughs> layer, layer densities, layer widths? Well, like that's, that? that's, the, that's the phase I'm at right now. I got, I've got a three, mil, three and something millimeter uh, a nozzle, a brass nozzle. But I haven't been able to try it out because Did I. You use it on this, a brass nozzle on this, then? Yeah, it would screw in just right, right like that. Okay. The, the, the so that's nozzle. really that's a plastic nozzle, and you can put brass nozzles on it and then adjust the thickness of the of the. Well, that's the hard layer. part. We we're using other people's equipment, yeah. like those little nozzles are. I think they use them for applying Pastry? glue. Oh, okay. Yeah. And it's a little injector thing, and. These are plastic, right? Those are plastic. And those are plastic models, and you can use this. But this one came oh. from this design. Mm -hmm. Okay. I see. Yeah. Okay. This is the clay piece. Yeah, that's the clay yeah. piece. And so this has just been fired with no. That's bisque porcelain. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Oh, that's beautiful, though. I, I yeah. yeah, I'm making ornaments mm -hmm. for Christmas. And so does this model then? Can you insert it? Can you scan it? Can you uh, program it just for this star? Is that what you're doing? You're yeah. Well, I do. I do have a little. Pro I have a little program for this, for and this I one. and I pierce the holes because. Mm -hmm. So if you print it in your ceramic one, it will come out. The now same. The, this is the thing. I don't know if I can print that miniature. Yeah. That's yeah. little. With especially that nozzle. So yeah, I, another printer, that, a 3D. Another 3D printer. This is a printer 3D. That, yes, I have yeah. a. And I have a. PLA and a, at a certain yes, that's right. Of that's right. So then I make a little mold of it. And it's then you could use lost wax, yeah. you could yeah. do... Yeah. 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 Whoops. Oh, I forgot to warn you that that's uh, not attached. Can you pick it up? Yeah. Yeah, that's all right. Can print up another one. And so then you get this and then you take that G code over oh, to this. Wow. And then you run the G code on here. Hopefully, hopefully, but like I said, I don't have any confidence that it'll print that little. Nope, you probably would have to. Um, now, I don't know if I mentioned yeah. the difference um, between a plastic printer, that's what I call it, I shouldn't call it that, but anyway, um, and this is they want a program, or they want the G code to have a continuous squirting. You know, extruding. Right. So, you don't, so it, yeah. you don't have any stops and starts, right. and uh, it's just basically a spiral in whatever yeah. way. Yeah. And a lot of people will take something like a square thing like this, and then they twist it. And I learned how to do that. You just each layer, you turn it right. one degree or something like that, and uh, and then it, you end up with a twist, and that's all the fad now. What would you say? How much the uh, the thing will cost to make that? The how much? Uh, well, clay. first to start out with eight hundred dollars for the printer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I just saw it's a, a few now. cents. Yeah. Except you know mm -hmm. the glaze I use, it's kind of, you know it's kind of expensive, very popular. But mm -hmm. so I don't know, maybe a dollar. That's it. 
It's this vulgar. Is the term by the, the machine. The machine. If you if you take the machine, if you count, don't count the machine, or you amortize it. Yeah, over, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. not much money. Yeah. And it's very economical. You know, um, one one that you there's like so like an ounce or something of clay in there. there. You no know, waste, so except the cleanup. Virtually no waste. So I see some of your bases. Okay, this is what happened. I yeah, tried to pack yeah. some clay on there, and almost every single one of them but is that not. That came out okay. Yeah, it did. It did. Uh, it's possibly I smear clay on the bat yeah. sometimes. Yeah. Now you no, see, I how see how it, it, it doesn't really, mm -hmm. this isn't a good clay job. But yeah, yeah, it is. Okay, so you'll see that it basically recovered from that disaster at the beginning. Oh, yeah. It does that. Yeah. So is and this porcelain that you're extruding here? That is not porcelain. It's just it? stoneware. It's uh, the most plastic stoneware they have. Yeah, here. yeah, it's called, uh, you don't oh, shoot, I can't remember. You don't buy the clay in tubes, right? It, it comes in. Uh, it's just regular <laughs> clay, and you pour in about 10 ounces of water in the bag of clay, or 15, they said. Mm -hmm. So you really get it wet, super wet. And. Uh, well, so you didn't make a slip. You just got made your clay really stupid. I just took. That's what they said to do. Take a bag of clay, pour in a pint of water, mm -hmm. with a rag, you know. 25 pounds. And then I and then I took the very. Um, wettest part. Oh, I'm sorry. You're right in the oh, 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 sorry. The way of the camera. And uh, then, then you, uh, you put it in the cylinder, and I invented something I call the Ramalama Ding Dong. It's a piece of PVC pipe, and I printed on the plastic printer a little cap, jam it down <laughs> in there. I was going to ask you, because you can't have any air in there. As a matter of fact, it's really interesting. If you do have a bubble, yeah. see that little thing turning up there with the yep. holes in it? Yep. It seems to siphon off air if oh, it's so a small it's enough if it's a small enough bubble. Okay. If it's a big bubble, you end up sort of missing a, a couple of layers, <laughs> and by then the tip is up here, and so you kind of have to start over. That's how I ended up with some. Sh so so I noticed that this 3D printer only moves in one direction and the plate moves in the other direction. That's right. Is that That's, important? Uh, well, um, what, what was the guy's name who was just here? He says he's trying to develop one where the base doesn't move. But, Doug? But, but, but wasn't then, Doug. But then your tubing has to articulate a lot more. It's, yeah, it's, got to move yeah, in it's not a perfect, but it's pretty darn good, you know. Well, it, I'm and wondering whether this isn't better because the yeah. tube only has to move this way. Yeah, that's right. Otherwise, one of them goes really this way and one down goes down this way, way and yeah, it, like it's pretty versatile. Well, I wonder if it is that versatile. It's pretty. What is ceramic this looks resin? Like it's hmm? What is ceramic resin? This article okay, talks about so ceramic yes, resin. Um, there's some exotic materials where people are printing ceramics with more engineering in, in this field than I have. Yeah. But that's what they have been doing. This is the first, this was from a Kickstarter where they use real clay, which is wonderful for us because we like clay. And, uh, and it's not, you're not limited to these really high. Yeah, that's really great. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, I couldn't be more delighted. And, you know, I keep having problems with the software because I am learning as I go. Not really. That's the problem. Is most printers they go to the slicers. You know what slicers are? Yeah. Is this, so what slicer are you using? For this? Well, I'm just using Cura, Cura. Uh, and usually a manufacturer will send the, the specs to the company, and they'll put a profile out. In this case, you have a lot of little notes and stuff, and you have to do that. And we had to come here to the open studio, and and uh, <coughs> Nathan Abel figured out this particular pot right here. And he said, um, 
when you're doing this continuous thing, you, you look for a design that is actually solid, but then you print it in this program called uh, something as, <laughs> I'll think of it in a second. Anyway, it just hollows it out. And then you can say how thick you want the walls. You don't mean Fusion 360 or? No, I'm, I'm learning through Fusion 360, but I'm, I'm, I'm way past. Uh, you can just take a SketchUp file and convert it to an STL file and print, it, print this, right? That's what I've been trying to do, and I have not been able to get this to do one of my own designs. Oh, to take the STL file to import it? I've got that. I've got this. I've got um, G code, uh -huh. but um, I haven't got the final step where it's doing it. But I have to admit, having to prepare for this threw me off. I have about three files I want to print. But I couldn't because I had to prepare. So I'll go home today and take a nap. And so what's the, can this print the full bed width? Or is yes. It, 150, it can do the full, 150, the full bed. Well, you'd probably have to figure out a way to. Uh, let's but see, it could I, be up to this wide, right? Pretty much. And I'd it could be up to the height. It says 240 millimeters. 250, 240 millimeters is, is about, is is about 10 inches. Yeah. yeah. It can't. I printed up. I printed oh, up right. one little pot. Oh, I didn't realize you got a camera there. Sorry. I know it's easy to forget. I mean, in case you see that. Yeah. So yeah. Um, but here's the thing: you could do two parts, right? Yeah. Don't we put pieces together all and the then time? Them together, yeah. And so I was thinking, you know, plus all all 3D printing has an angle they don't like to go past. So I'm going to have to test, can I make a bowl? Oh. Like I used to like to make um, chalices, right? You've got a column, that should be easy to print. It could even be, uh, have no bottom at all, like this. This could be a chalice. Sure. And then you print a little bowl and you... Sp and you could, I guess you could mix throwing and, and printing a base. So yeah. Wanted, yeah, as long as you the same clay or whatever. Yeah. But this is fun six. Yes. This is what? Fun six. Clay? This is stone one? This is cone six, yes. I'm so sorry. I have a hard time with uh, masks. I can't understand you. <laughs> ah, yeah, um, this is going to flare out a little bit. Very cute. Uh, I've got about three of them, and uh, I do a lot of figurative stuff. So I took one. This is going to go up like this. I turned it over, and it's like a a dress, oh. and then I put a little head on it, mm. and a little shawl. That's what I do a lot of. And then they're empty. They're they're a jar, and they're inspired by the canopic jars of Egypt. It's figurative jars. And I I wanted to bring it, but I it wasn't even bisque, so I couldn't bring it. Anyway, I just see all kinds of possibilities. Any questions else? What is the time? No, that part's easy. Slicing it's easy. Um, like I said, uh, Nathan Abel told me to use this spiralizer. That's spiralizer. It's this program that'll take something that the picture of the rendering looks solid, but it will print it the, width, the, the thickness of the walls that you want. Now that's the thing I want, is uh, to be able to do that. Plus, I'd like to do thicker walls because, of course, you know, it's more sturdy. Shipping, I ship stuff and, and mugs. I make a lot of mugs and so, so you, you want... you can't really adjust the, the amount of material that's coming out of that. Not while it's running, you know, that's the problem. That's kind of the thing, I think is it true, Rick, that in some situations with some 3D printers, you can adjust it as you go? I mean, you, 
you can tell the G code to change, make that thicker. Is that possible? Uh, or do you have to do it all in? You can really make it thicker. You can change the temperature, the speed, you can change the color, things like that. You couldn't tell it to double the width. No. Yeah. So. You have to do that first in the model. Yeah, you have to code that in. Oh, okay. I, yeah. You, you are restricted to how much clay you can. That's right, cylinder. except for what I was saying is that you could do multiple pieces and score it, score it and flip it like, yeah, yeah. And you would some other clay. Yeah, yeah, you, you, you could do, you know, what was that? Slab build. Yeah, yeah, right, you could add parts. I just think that's so exciting, you know, because I like to break rules. And uh, I've always been that way with clay. Is uh, what can I do? It seems like you could even you could even form your own base. Right. That's what and I was. Then program I, it so that it started. Started printing right on the base. the base. Actually, I, somewhere I have some. I I used a cookie cutter and I yeah. I, I brought a little cookie and I thought oh I'll do that, <laughs> but now I can't find it. Anyway, it's the most fun toy, you know, and you pay more for a wheel. You pay more for a kiln. I paid $4,000 for my kiln. So I'd say, I, uh, I, would, I would recommend it, um, but I can't wait until the forums and the support from other potters and other programmers is fleshed out because it's right now there's it's you're on your own pretty much well no the that that piece says how long they've been making ceramic printers for a long time uh -huh. but they've been industrial and the thousands I mean tens of thousands hundreds of thousands of dollars this is the first one that's affordable for well I'm thinking about getting the uh, the Saran bot, the three thousand dollar one, but I'll wait and see how Christmas goes. <laughs> how did you select this one? How did I select uh -huh. it? Yeah, well, I I looked on. I mean, I was social media. You know, there was uh, somebody was talking about ceramic printing, and I thought, ooh, neat, and. Uh, <clears throat> And the term Cerambot came up, and I found out they did a Kickstarter. And you could have got this thing for about $300, the whole thing. Only it came as a box of bolts, you know. You, I'm glad the other people suffered <laughs> figuring it all out. So um, this was the first one that comes out of the box, pretty much ready to use. You just have to tweak a little bit of parts together, and it was $800. They've gone up to nine now, but. <laughs> if we wait a while, we'll see what happens when a bubble shows up. Oh, is there one bubbles. coming? Is it a big bubble or a little bubble? You have, you have a big bubble and then a relatively small okay. one. Okay, all right, so I have done this trick. Is that It has a pause button, and if it's a big one like this, I put a pause on and it seems to advance and then watch this when it hits here. I think we're standing right in front Oops. of it. Yeah. I've seen this have a little puff of of uh, yeah, dust. It seems to be built into it. They must have figured out, oh yeah, a bubble could really ruin the piece. But like Every, every failure, I've, I've used it and made something with it, so I have uh, no worries about that. Yeah, this is, uh, this is good to know. This is, this is a good thing for you to witness. It's, Water to make it the 
No, you just take a regular bag of clay. Okay. And you add 15 ounces. I added 15 ounces. That's what they asked. Okay. I didn't need that much. And you put a rag in, you know, like how you reconstitute your clay yeah. in a bag that's gotten a little dry. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> and then then the thing is evening out the moisture. You know, I just slam it around a little bit. But you don't want to add more air. So you can see, in this case, I sliced the piece off and almost immediately put it in the tube. And I still ended up with a, with a bubble. My husband wrote down, it's not that messy, but finicky. <laughs> Well, it's, it, it seems like this is going slow. I, my memory is that that happens faster, but it will, it will get up there. Yeah, I want, it, you, I want you to see this little puff of... How tall is this program to be? This one is only about yay big. It's like a little flared uh, vase, I guess. I saw somebody printed the, the frog right into it. You know how you've got halfway up? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it printed a little frog with holes in it. I thought, that's brilliant. <laughs> I like the idea of my favorite thing is all the fussy stuff, right? So I really like that I can just sit back and they'll make something and I can then do something with it. And I suppose it could be fa made faster. It looks to me like it could. These guys, you can buy this part here. And it looks like they don't give you this and they don't sell it. So they must have decided it was redundant. And they must have decided it was redundant, this second pusher. And uh, <coughs> you can buy it and you can just hook it up to a nozzle of a regular 3D printer. And then you could really save a bundle that way. But I suspect it's harder because you have to do, you have to build yourself a printer, you know. But it will use most, is it FDM or what is these kind of printers called where you lay down? Yeah, that's a pretty big bubble. <laughs> I have this one here. You can't tell, because I used a lot of lovely glaze on here. It had a bubble, and it sort of blew out a chunk, and I tapped a little clay in it, and it was all gnarly for several layers. I don't know if you can see. But in the end, it recovered. Great, just great. All right, let's see. Almost there. There's no clock in here, Rick. Is there a clock in here? One forty-two. Oh, okay. That's right. We started at one.
Uh, no, you just you get you go to um, Izao and that's what you get. I mean, it doesn't look like that Sarambot even seems to have a forum at all. But I could be wrong. I just I haven't found it. They do have a forum, but nobody has said anything on it since August, so it's not very active. Okay, here it comes. You can see that the layer is much smaller and now there's gaps. So you can see that preparing the clay and getting no air in it is really the hardest part. Yeah. That was a big air bubble. <laughs> Did you did you see it? Yeah, I didn't see it. It yeah it it uh, I don't know what it'll do now. I'm just gonna watch and see because it's still happening. Let's try this. I wonder uh, you can't uh, you can't do two things at once. Yeah. But uh, if I could, I would raise the bed right. a millimeter and it'd probably... See if it recovers. Yeah. It depends on, I think, all the factors um, yeah, because it see it's not touching anything wet. It depends on everything pushing from behind. Yes, that's that right. Air. <laughs> yeah, I think this one's a lost cause. Yeah, we got nothing else to do. Bubble's almost gone. Ah, look at that. There's the pop. Yeah. It, it blew a bubble. Let's see, now it's way too high. Way too high. Yeah. But look, it's, it's correcting itself a bit. Yeah. But it's got one more bubble after that. Yeah. Well, look at this. This is fun. <laughs> it's like it's on purpose. Maybe that's how they do those loop ones. Have you seen those? The pictures of the people that do a kind of, it looks like a yarn loop. I don't see one more bubble. Yeah, but that, that one's not that big. I no. found this one here. Oh yeah, I'm afraid that's uh, going to pop too. So it's like the time that was wasted with air, it moves the knob it keeps up, going and up. Come back down to its original start point and move up. I so wish, it yeah. Um, I could, I could stop it. And I could put it on pause. One time I paused it, and the air, the bubble seemed to move through. I put it back on and it, it finished and it did fine. So did you sort of squeeze the knob? No, I didn't do anything. I just sort of put it on pause for a moment, started to back up. I like this. 
It's a sea anemone. Once it gets rid of that next bubble, it might just keep. Yeah. And have a. So there's no there. way to get rid of the bubbles that you, you can see in there. Nope. You have to really pack it well. Yes. So, can so you use um, a degasser? Yeah, that'd be great, wouldn't it? Well, I think I think the bigger, fancier ones go straight from a pug mill with a de error right into the extruder. That's the three thousand dollar one. Oh no, that's a lot more than that. Oh okay. That. Yeah, yeah, that's the industrial kind because they couldn't afford to have this happen. This is really cute though. <laughs> I love it. Now here's another thing, when, when it's done, it's very fragile. I don't know how I'll get it home. Oh, I could leave it here and come get it. Sure. But um, it's very, very fragile, and because the clay is really wet when you put it in, it's very, very fragile. This is so cute. Yeah, I thought about that, giving a couple of little uh, fans on each side, one going this way and one, and then it would, uh, then you could probably experiment and get interesting stuff. Is it, is it rid itself of that little bubble? Yep. See, so it now it's just... Now it's just doing what it can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And I think it looks to me like the clay in that particular section is kind of wet too. Yeah. Doesn't yeah. it look a lot wetter than it's that? It's way wetter to me. It seems to sag a little, which is kind of charming. Well, and it's not as tight, so, so yeah. I think it's, yeah. it's extruding a sort of a yeah. I, rope. I print, printed three of this design and they're all tight. You know, yeah, they're very, yeah. very structured. This isn't that tight right now. No, it isn't. That's why I like it. You take a piece, you know, a piece that you threw or something, and then print this, a, a, a little sprig to put on, a, on yes. your... Except that I was just saying, I don't think I can get that kind of detail. Okay. I, I mean, I might be able with that fish, or if you'll see, the regular printers, they, they have those lines, you know, and I'm trying to figure out a way, like that one there with the gold on it, or the copper, I'm trying to figure out how to smooth them. Did you, um, have you, I was just looking at that article in there on the resin clay, and so sending resin clay through a normal nozzle that would be a nozzle for a 3D printer, there, I have no way of knowing any, I mean, I don't know anything about resin clay. Um, well, yeah, I, what I mean is it would be just a regular 3D printer like that. And maybe, I don't, like I said, that, that I, just saw I only there. saw it referred to there. And maybe it's a filament, a resin clay filament, and so you could just run it through one of these printers and take it and put it in the kiln. If you find out, let me know because... Well, yeah, but I mean, if you do it. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll look and see if I can find it, but that would be sort of cool to see another filament type that, but it's, I don't know if it would change up the color of your... But most of us, like most of us that do clay, love clay. So we don't want to do filaments with resin. So I would think, wouldn't you agree? Yeah. Um, well, I, I guess if it were, it's sort of like a mix, you know, like, uh, so if you thought of it as do a you mix. Think, do you, did you get the feeling that it was a wet substance? Well, I, I don't know. I, you know, probably not. Probably do you, so do you know, fun. Rick? Thank you. You're Sorry. welcome. Rick, do you know? Have you ever he heard of ceramic resin? Printers? Yeah. I 
I know the resin printers. Oh yeah, you might have to send out something like that because it did say something about that. It's got to be an unusual one. I know. That's really pretty fascinating. I love it. I hope I can get it home. Oh, you have to be able to bring it home. Well, I think I'll just leave it here overnight. And then let it dry. Yeah. So you can just let it so get is to it the leather stage. hard to get off that base? Probably not too bad, huh? I, you have to be patient. It's not like you can wire it off like right. we do, you right. know. And it doesn't uh, have much of a base. Like, like Jill was saying, if she can make it thicker. That's what I'm going to do. Yeah. Uh -huh. when, when I'm doing it, uh, they, they sell these. But if I used a little bat that was thinner and just made up the difference with clay, then I'd have oh, a nice a bottom. That, that's, what I, that's what I was thinking. Either program it or with the bat, adjust the bat size. Yeah. yeah. Well, you guys, um, what, what, uh, where can I see some of your work? Oh. <laughs> You're not that brave? We're, we're, we're beginners. Oh, you are! Oh, yeah, at our house. <laughs> That's where yeah. you can see. <laughs> now, let's see. So we're, we're already getting offers for this piece when it's finished because I they, know we, we've it. documented the creation. I know. Yeah, yeah. That's really fascinating. Yeah. It just is. Do you, do you recall how tall this one is when it finishes? It's all, it would be almost done now. Okay. Yeah. But it's very close. Maybe less than, less than an inch. Yeah. Made of. This is a 3D print. This is a 3D print. Yeah. Uh, See, I I made. Put you them together and then. Okay, so I made a few um, of these. It's it's kind of Halloweeny. Yeah. Okay, I put a skull here. Yeah. And ribs here. Uh -huh. And uh, it's just a little wall pocket pod. I call them pods. And so is this, but this is printed on an FD printer? Press, yes, this was printed on a, a 3D plastic printer. And, uh, and what did you, you painted it then at that point? I, and this is what I'm trying to do with this is see, here it's filled a little bit. This is. And uh, this is a paint that's supposed to be a primer and a uh, paint. Yeah. And so then, but I'm impatient and I don't want to do layer after layer after layer. Yeah. Apparently you can use some, well it's because you see that? Did you glue two pieces together? This has probably got infill in there. Okay, but so this isn't a glued in? No, nope, no, no, this is, this went, this was in the design because I had one piece that went like this and I sliced it up. Do you, do you do programming with it? Yeah, yeah. Okay, well you know you make a hole and I sliced that part off. And then I think I turned it over and stuck it on there and cool, huh? put a hole yeah. there. So, but it's so thin. Now, the, this the, one's thicker. The thing I was thinking of when you do this is it's based upon the nozzle. Like Nathan Versus probably this told one. you that. The nozzle width yeah. is going to give you the finer. Yeah. And because you can then adjust the speed and, and basically the layer thickness. Yeah. When you come out of a little nozzle which you can't do on this. So you'd have to start off with a set nozzle. You can get a smaller nozzle for this. Well, see, that might be what you want to do. If you're going to do something like this, yeah. so this nozzle is probably... Um, yeah, I'll give it a try. 0.2 mil. Yeah. And so... This came with four little nozzles. Okay, you could try a I'll try the nozzle. smallest one. Try the smallest one. It'll take you more really, time. You really have hope, huh? Yeah, you know, you could try it. Just yeah. do something okay. small. Yeah. Don't do something like this and try a small nozzle because it takes you to yeah. the time. You're welcome. Nice meeting you. Hope to see you around town. The time really increases when you... I don't care about that because I've got so many things I'm doing anyway. What I love about this yeah. is I can walk away and do something else. Yeah, right, I can get, it. It's like it. having an employee. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, that was really interesting. Thank you. I think we're done. Thanks for having me and thanks Rick and, and uh, the other Doug and, uh, and Nathan. I don't think I got hurt. Yeah. Yep. Okay.
Yep. Well, um, I, I'm, I'm going to just stop it. It's almost done. Let me see. It's 94%, and I have a feeling it's not going to make it. If it's okay with anybody, everybody, can I leave this overnight? Mm -hmm. Because if I try to take this home, it'll, it'll, it'll break. Oh, can I just set it? it? Yeah. Can, can I? Right well, that was fun. He teaches 360. He teaches rhino. He, really? He's taught it here at the barn. Oh, good. For all the different.